The Brief Personal Essay. What is a brief personal essay? The brief or flash essay is constrained by its length. Various literary journals have upper word limits of between 500 and 1500 words. In this course, we will use the limit set by Brevity, the flagship journal in brief nonfiction, which is 750 words. The brief personal essay is different than a magazine article or editorial in that it relies on personal experience told in scene rather than on a didactic discussion of a specific topic. The goal is generally to get the reader to feel rather than to know something by the end of the piece. What are the key craft elements to a brief personal essay? The brief personal essay usually begins in situ or jumps right into scene without any backstory or explanation of what is to happen, involves the development of an authorial persona, uses personal experience to get at something larger, something to which all or at least many readers can relate, works toward creating a feeling rather than new knowledge in the reader, either ends with a brief consideration of the scenes from the narrative or leaves this work of reflecting on what these scenes mean up to the reader. Persona. Authorial persona in the brief personal essay is the version of the author who is a character on the page and therefore is never representative of everything the author is. Is most often created by sharing small details about the author, such as age, race, profession, romantic position, disability, that is the key to the reader's understanding of the narrative, but leaves out any extraneous details. Establishes the author's authority to speak to issues raised in the narrative of the essay. For instance, when you read Poster Children, think about why it's necessary that we know that the author herself is disabled. Personal experience. We all have funny stories and stories about moments of great emotional pain. How can you tell which of these would be the foundation of a good brief personal essay and which would not? The experience should be unique enough that the reader comes to know something new. The most common personal essay topic written in undergraduate classrooms is the essay about the death of a grandmother. These essays most often fail because they don't go beyond what is almost always universally true of this experience, that the grandmother was beloved, that her family is sad at her passing, and that she was a loving figure in the author's life. Because this is such a universal experience, it doesn't make for a good personal essay. The reader gets nothing new out of it. There should be a change in understanding on the part of the authorial character. For instance, a brief essay about going hiking in a favorite spot is not in itself inherently interesting. But a brief essay about going hiking in a favorite spot and discovering that a kind of wildflower you usually see there has been crowded out by the kudzu and the way that made you think of the sweep of history and how new things often require the destruction of what was already there and how maybe this is like becoming an adult and finding that certain childhood enthusiasms have to be let go. Now that might be a really interesting piece. There is one kind of personal experience that almost always fails to generate a good essay. The experience of belittling another person, even if that person has done you great harm. An essay about what a horrible person your ex turned out to be, if it is written only to convince the reader that the ex is indeed horrible, isn't likely to speak to the reader who doesn't know you or your ex. An essay about what a horrible person your ex turned out to be and how you learned something about yourself when you realized you'd put up with that horribleness to have such a good looking partner might, on the other hand, be wonderful. Often, the best essays juxtapose two or more personal experiences in order to show change over time, the development of the author's understanding of the world, or the tension between two events. When you read Sherman Alexie's Somebody Else's Genocide, Think about how either the story of the German woman and his reading or the story of his trip to Dachau, a concentration camp, would mean less if either was told alone and how the two work together to create meaning in the essay. Creating a felt experience through specific detail. Very often, the goal of the brief personal essay is to create a feeling rather than new knowledge in the reader. Feelings are a sensory experience and best elicited through specific sense detail, what something looks, feels, sounds, or tastes like. As you read through the essays for this week, look at the specific details, 
the placement of the folded blankets in the last section of poster children, or the description of the kitchen table in shame, for instance, and think about why those are important. Dialogue is a tool for creating a felt experience. Dialogue often serves as a good way to create a felt experience in the reader. It allows the reader to witness events in a way that exposition does not. The reader experiences the dialogue as an uninterpreted event and does the work of making meaning of it herself, and so becomes an actively engaged participant in the work of the essay. Note the way dialogue functions in the essays we're reading this week, and consider how the essay would be changed if, instead of dialogue, the author had simply summarized the conversations. A weird true thing about creating a felt experience. So this may be counterintuitive, but one of the ways to shut down a reader's felt experience is to tell the reader how to feel. For instance, you can dampen the impact of a sad scene by telling the reader, and I was really, really sad. Note how in Chop Suey, Sukhranurang never tells us what he felt when his mother responds to the man who, came, who comes over to them in a bowling alley to say some awful racist thing. But you know how he feels, right? Pride mixed with anger and maybe a little bit of fear until the situation is resolved. Think about how the essay would be less immediate, less impactful, if Sukhranurang had paused to tell us that he felt those things, rather than letting us figure that out for ourselves. Ending the essay. As we've seen, the essay can end in two different ways. Either the author reflects, reflects briefly, as you'll see in Shame and Somebody Else's Genocide, or leaves the reflection up to the reader, Poster Children, Chop Suey. How do you know which strategy is best for your piece? If the piece is meant to illustrate a change in the authorial character's understanding, you'll want to show that change in a brief reflection at the end. If the piece is meant to show a change in how the reader feels, rather than to signal a change in the authorial character, you'll want to end in scene rather than telling the reader what it is you want her to feel. Next steps. You should begin working on your own brief essay, keeping these specific craft elements in mind. The essay will be due to your peer review group by Friday at 11.59 p.m. You can find instructions for how to upload it and how to review the work of your peers in the week two folder on UTC Learn.